be talking about Craven's Last Hunt, uh, the amazing Spider-Man, uh, Craven's Last Hunt by uh, MJ Dematteis. J M J M. Is it M J or J M? I can't. Oh, 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 it's not like they don't have <laughs> credits right here. I mean. <laughs> Uh, uh, written by J.M. D. Mateus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, penciler Mike Zek. Mike Zek. Well, do you want to explain to people? Because we're gonna go down the list of these jobs, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna say the job and who did it, mm-hmm. and you know a lot about what these people do. Right. I, I, it, well, everything so like, I know for is from chasing Amy. But. Right. Yeah, of course, that's everything <laughs> I know too, man. That's that's how I got down to one meal a day and learned how to speak Spanish. Me and Ben Affleck and Kevin Smith. Um. Penciler Mike Zek. Now, Penciler is the guy who who does the art. Right. That's the actual artist. Right. Like, yeah. Like, there's a lot of controversy about guys like uh, Jack Kirby mm-hmm. pumping out so many comics back in those days, right. and and the the inkers or the 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 colorists mm-hmm. would make the art very different. From the what, tracers. Right. Yeah. I, it, it would just also just like make make it a different. It's like color correcting something exactly on a different. On a, okay. So we got penciler Mike Zek on this one. Uh, uh, I would say he was he was responsible for this this cover and also just this mm-hmm. this this writing oh, here. Oh, beautiful. I mean, I don't. I couldn't even tell you when Craven's first appearance was because mm-hmm. it was probably one of those villains that like. Like that that's the spot or the prowler that's so well known now, but mm-hmm. like in the sixties and seventies. Oh yeah. He was he he was like to use a quote from across the Spider Verse, he was a villain of the week. Like in nineteen sixty three right. when he debuted. Yeah. Like no one was ever excited when it was a Craven comic until this. Well what do you know what the comic was? I I I need to it was nineteen sixty three, I'm pretty sure it was the comic right before the Sinister Six comic. So that was Spider Man oh, Annual man. number one. And he yeah. was a one off? Like he was just this g- Kind of, yeah. It was actually, it was one of the first interesting con- con- uh, continuations because Spider-Man's first enemy ever was the Chameleon, like first like super villain. He enemy. was the first. He was. The, I yeah. never knew that. Yeah. So I mean, if you're not counting the guy that shot Uncle Ben in Amazing Fantasy 15, right? Yeah. Which who did we ever get a name for that? No. Like Batman's he, parents murderer was Joe Chill. That was right? Joe Chill. But yeah. The guy who killed Uncle Ben doesn't right. matter. I used to think his name was Dennis Farina, but that that. <laughs> <laughs> I think his name was, was that Dennis. the actor's name. <laughs> that's the act- oh, that's who. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. actor from Get Shorty. We we never learned his name, but anyway, the first supervillain he faces in Amazing Spider-Man number one is the Chameleon Dimitri Dimitri Smerdyakov, who's a master of disguise. Right. And Spider-Man foils his plan, so Chameleon comes back in this issue right uh, in 1963 and sa- and decides to bring in his half brother Craven the Hunter to take down Spider-Man, and that's what brings in Craven. Chameleon is half brothers with Craven. Exactly. So Craven. Craven's mom or dad is Chameleon's. His they have the same. Dads. They have the same dad. Yeah. So okay. Craven's mo- Craven uh, Craven's parents. Yeah, they were uh, they were aristocrats during the Bolshevik Revolution, so mm-hmm. they had to flee Russia. And his mom, they couldn't. They they moved to the UK and they just couldn't adjust. So his mom ends up getting committed and then kills herself. It's very heavy stuff for a comic book. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's. It's not. It's not even that it's heavy for a, a a comic book. It's the one and only time that I can think of that, and it's also the first time mm-hmm. that a Spider-Man story was ever like this. Yeah. Like, I mean, this point in comics history, comics were getting darker because mm-hmm. the writers were writing to the audience that mm-hmm. was growing up. That's when the speech bubbles, they were still there. Exactly. The thought bubbles. Uh, uh, but the narration wasn't as... I always compare, like... I, I rewatched the 90s Spider-Man show, mm-hmm. which, like, there's some great episodes, but, like, I just... Compared to Batman, the animated series, which I still think is perfect and I can watch every single day oh, of the yeah. week, the Spider-Man show of the 90s was very much him just narrating what was going on in the thing. I gotta use my web shooters to get... <laughs> to activate that door panel so this way the kingpin doesn't find his rogaine right like and the the terrible that, advertisement for rogaine terrible. i don't know why <laughs> they allow that on cw for kids uh they were like no guns but we got to get a lot of shit in we here we need this product placement in there we're gonna get sued because of nair um but uh so anyway uh dark dark story for spider-man that has not been done not been done since. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? I agree, yeah. And I think it's because this story was built around the darkness. There was obviously a major death that happened in the 70s with the death of Gwen Stacy. Walk us through where Peter is right now. Absolutely. 
So before the story, Peter is in a very raw place in a couple for a couple of reasons. One, he just married Mary Jane Watson, who he loves, and he's so happy to marry her. And he was reticent about marrying her because it was very much the kind of superhero thing. If my enemies ever got to me, ever used you to get to me. Which but, is a great excuse to use if you ever want to stop seeing a girl and you're a superhero. Right, yeah. I mean, so, I've never been on a date before, but I'm, assu- right, I'm, I'm yeah. assuming if— Yeah, uh, we're 40 minutes into a comic book podcast. They right. knew that already. We didn't yeah. have to say that. He's gained a marriage, but he's lost a kind of friend, but also an enemy. He Throughout the 80s, he's been going up against an adversary, Hobgoblin, who is basically a great recurring foe. He's kind of a leveling up of the Green Goblin for the 80s. And it's revealed that the Hobgoblin was Ned Leeds. Ned Leeds in the comics is not like the Ned Leeds in the Spider-Man Homecoming movies. He is a rival of Peter's. He works at the Daily Bugle. He's a reporter. And he's married to Betty Brand, who is Peter's first love interest. Oh, so he's not like the kid that comes up with Peter and then discovers the secret along with Right. He's right. not the guy in the hat. Like, yes. Peter, didn't, Peter right. didn't have any friends in high school originally. Yeah. It was very depressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that's a common theme. <laughs> right, right. So Ned, he's, Ned's dead. Ned's, Ned, Ned has died, and he's also the Hobgoblin. So Peter, I think they were they were rivals originally, kind of like him and Flash Thompson. And then right. they became friends just because he loved Betty, and like he was just very happy for her. And uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't say they were like super close, but they were acquaintances. But they were there. Okay, yeah. okay. But it's still – the thing about about Spider-Man, what, what I always love about him is when he's fighting his villains, he doesn't call – most of the time – he doesn't call the villains by their villains' names. Right. Like if he's fighting the Vulture, he'll call him Adrian. Right, exactly. It, like he'll call Carnage. Carnage is the only one he'll call Carnage. Yeah, yeah that is this guy's too level. fucked up. That's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Even Cletus don't don't, <laughs> don't deserve this. I want to see a Carnage movie where it's Cletus from The Simpsons being like, "We got all this thing to kill out here, baby. We gonna kill all them possums. It's gonna be Carnage. I'm gonna find my daddy named Venom." Uh, uh, but he he has a humanity to him, right. which we also see in this. And book. Batman doesn't do that. Batman only does that for one villain, he, which is Harvey Dent. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, that's gonna be a fun one to yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. for Long Halloween. So that's where his head is at going into this, which is they make very clear mm-hmm. right when the book starts, like with what the dichotomy is that we're seeing between what Craven's going through and what Peter's right. going through. Um, are there any other big life events that I can think of? No, I think May, yeah, yeah. Uh, Aunt May probably just old as shit. She's and always sick. armored. Yeah, 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 she's always either sick or marrying Jonah. Sometimes <laughs> they do that. Have you ever read any of those? She's married she, to Jay she Jonah. Marries, she marries him. She marries Doc Ock at one point. Oh God, uh-huh. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, uh, why don't you kick us off? Absolutely. Ready to summarize? So, so. Oh wait, am I supposed to? Do I think the first you're doing chapter, chapter one, but uh, but. <laughs> Well, we could talk about it. Absolutely. I'm actually glad because I opened the first, I opened the first page, and I was like, "Oh wait, yeah, I'm supposed to talk about it." I got notes. <laughs> this is what makes this a this first page of Craven's Last Hunt does two things. One answers the debate mm-hmm. of if Craven is a top five Spider villain, mm-hmm. and two, if you don't know who this guy is, you know within looking at him in this first page, just the. That tells you everything. Oh, and there's a common theme. Oh, I have chills. Take me, daddy. That's that's just him. Throughout this book, Craven gets butt as naked. (laughs) It happens a lot. I didn't realize it until I was reading it through. I'm not even trying to be funny. He just gets naked, which I think is a great character. Like every time he's he because like he's an animal. Yeah, he wants to. You know, his whole thing is Mm -hmm. he doesn't use weapons. He's he's a he's Craven the hunter. But he gets naked a lot. Well, he's in great shape though. Like he can great pull it shape. off. Like like this isn't like Wilson Fisk getting naked. No. Like Well, that would be even better. That would be <laughs> it would be a twelve issue series instead of a the six. search for Wilson Fisk's it would penis. Be, I wanna see God. <laughs> that is the Spider Man book I wanna see. The search one the Vanessa! Spider Man. Vanessa, I found it! Get over here! Vanessa! <laughs> When I was a boy, <laughs> the last time I saw this, um, I will never stop hunting for my penis. You don't get to tell me. You don't get to change me having a boy dick. <laughs> Even though I'm blind, I know it's small. I haven't lost my sense of touch, just my sense of sight. Um, we, the, the first line, mm-hmm. this whole this whole first part of the book is Craven naked. Fighting a Black Panther, mm-hmm. he uh, takes the head off of what appears to be a monkey of some sorts. I think it's a gorilla. Mm-hmm. While uh, his assistants are in the back digging a grave, right? And um, his how much you think Craven pays? I was thinking that too, yeah. man. Like, because he lives in a mansion. He does. 
Craven, I would say, has Norman Osborn level money. Yeah, I think so. Because that's the hunting is his trade. That's his shit, right? Like, he's also he, old. He's been around since the Bolshevik this, Revolution. Yeah, this, so with inflation. Yeah, like. with infl. Yeah, he's got more money than the people who are writing for him. That's for <laughs> goddamn sure. Um, and we see again, just naked. There's a lot of shots of his ass. <laughs> there is Craven the Hunter. Craven leaving little to be the desired. <laughs> leaving little to the imagination. <laughs> and also his, uh, it's also, uh, I found out through what little bit of research outside of nerdism, his monologue mm-hmm. is a poem. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, it's from quotations from William Blake's poem, The Tiger. It, wow. And it's, Spelt T Y G E R, and in this, like when you know he's going, the beast. My heart is fire and pride. Uh, I am Kravinov. But when he says spider, it's spelled with a Y. Mm-hmm. So like tiger, spider. I gotta Aww. read the poem and learn some see see what the parallels are. But like, I just I love that. I yeah. Love when comics make me feel a little smarter. Oh, absolutely. Even though I didn't do I didn't look into why this is. Oh yeah. This, this uh- is. There's an I learned about Walt Whitman from Breaking Bad. Set, dude, yeah. that, I learned about that, and I learned when to not take a shit at a family function. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So we see Craven basically saying, he's talking about what you were talking, what you gave us the background mm-hmm. with his parents. Mm-hmm. Um, they said his mother was insane. He keeps talking about how, his, how, how he's saying, uh, how they said his mother was insane. Mm-hmm. They said his mother was insane. Um and then he goes, I will die soon. I must die soon. That's what made me think he had cancer. Mm-hmm. And as he's saying that, he's standing over a casket where he's holding a drink in one hand. The casket's open, and he has the black Spider-Man costume in his hand. And he goes, I will die soon. And then he goes, not yet, while he's crying, holding the Spider-Man mask. Then we get to... Uh, what Spider-Man is up to. He goes to Joe Face's funeral. Joe Face is like a street-level snitch. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's angry. He's talking about losing Ned. He's talking about... He's having one of those moments where it's just like, what am I doing all this shit for if, I, if I'm... If this just... This sucks. Yeah. Everything about this sucks. He's lost basically everyone important in his life with everyone. the exception of Mary and, and, and Mary Jane and Amy. Yeah. Gwen Stacy, the love of his life. Yeah. George Stacy, who was basically another father figure to him, which, side note, I love that they made that such a crucial point in Across the Spider-Verse. That was a great canon was great. thing. Yeah, I love that. That was cool. Really uh, cool. So they, so they're so they going... So he's he's just... He's in a... Usually when we see him going through this, mm-hmm. he's in a uh, point of optimism. Right. He's he's tired right He's, he's exhausted. He's exhausted mm-hmm. emotionally. Um, it's a thankless job. Uh, I think him being in the black suit... Mm-hmm makes this story. He doesn't want to be doing this. Like he does not want to be ba- doing with this. With Batman, Bruce Wayne is the mask. Batman yes. is who he is. Of Spider course. Spider-Man, Peter Parker is who he is. He doesn't want to be Spider-Man. That he is such guilty. an important theme that they make such a different they they that's when I learned that about him mm-hmm. was through this book. Exactly. Um because Peter Parker is what makes Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Batman is is what makes Batman. Batman you know, wants like, to do this. He's like Daredevil. Daredevil you know wants to be beating the shit out of guys. It, to Punisher too. Punisher, absolutely. That's the, the, that, oh, you're god. one bad day away from being we, me. Oh my god, I liked it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Hell yeah, I have Shia LaBeouf on my podcast again. <laughs> Never heard of John Berthold. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I just watched a documentary about it. Um, so we're talking about the humanity of Spider-Man. He's Joe Face is some street level snitch, and he's having a, a funeral right. in like some backdoor bar, mm-hmm. and they're all kind of ragging on him. He had no money, he had no nothing. Mm-hmm. Spider, they're they're giving a eulogy. Uh, Spider-Man gets there. They all do the. It's the spider. We gotta scramble. <laughs> and Spider-Man gets there, and like he's in such a bad mood that he's like. Dog, just please don't flinch at me because I'm I'm not gonna pull my punches right now. I'm right. in a bad mood. And then they flinch, and then he you just see him. He leans over the grave, and uh, he takes money out of his little spidey trunks, mm-hmm. and he puts it in the collection plate, and then he pieces out. Then he goes home. He's just in bed. He's chilling, and he's and he's like, damn, this is my. He has some bad dreams about Craven. <laughs> with uh, where Craven's like bathing in spiders. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then he wakes up and he goes. Oh man, that's crazy! I gotta oh. get more hours in. Oh, what, what what I do down there? Oh jeez, what's going on? <laughs> How did this happen? Oh boy, what's oh boy? I'm sticking to my own my own sheets, not for the reasons I usually am. 
This time has come. <laughs> what I love about him is he immediately wakes up from the dream and then he goes from having he's like waking up naked in the dream, right? That's right. And then more pictures of Craven. Craven's like eating spiders. Uh huh. I think he that's not a that's like a thing that's happening and somehow Peter is seeing it because I believe Craven would do some shit like oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucked up. He would drown himself in spiders yeah. because Craven's thing is he has to become he doesn't know what makes Spider Man Spider Man, exactly. which is a lesson they, they both learn throughout this story. He's focused on the spider, He's not the man. He's focused on the spider. He decides to go web slinging at night during a rainy night. Must be hard to web sl- swing at I, night, man. I would think so. It's gotta hurt. Yeah. It's and very, like you better not moist. be carrying anybody. <laughs> you gotta hit a building, man. <laughs> like, Everybody gets one. You can't explain that at a funeral without it being very clear that <laughs> Spider Man is responsible for why your body was splattered up against the Chrysler Tower. Like that, he that he apologizes. He goes, "I'm funeral, sorry, Uncle Ben." He goes, "Apologize to him. Stop apologizing, to Uncle Ben." Scrape her off the building <laughs> now. As he's swinging his head, as he's swinging it around, Craven finds him. Pulls he, out a rifle. He pulls out a rifle, and Spider Man's like, This ain't your style, man. Hey, geez, put down the gun, man. And then and, <laughs> you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses. You shook him up. <laughs> we both got to say it. We both felt it. You wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you, Jack? Uh, and the fear going with, through his head when that happens, too. Because he's just like, What the? F-? Yeah. It's very he goes, similar. Is that a fucking rifle? How is that? A rifle. Craven holding a rifle mm-hmm. is like Venom holding a boombox. Right. <laughs> You know, because like I'm like, that's the one thing you don't do. Yeah, you never you don't do that box. at all. You hate that thing. That's what you built your whole identity around. They've publicly held dear that I'm just gonna beat Spider-Man with my bare hands. Yeah. he's like, fuck it, I'm fuck shooting it. him. This is my last time because he's, he's like Scott in uh in, in Austin Powers. He goes, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just take a gun and shoot him. Because Craven's last hunt here is not How about hunting no Spider-Man. Scott? He's yeah, you're not going to do it. Yeah, is Craven is hunting? himself mm-hmm. he is hunting he's so pissed that he's able to beat b- best everyone mm-hmm. except this dude so now instead of besting him he just puts him to sleep for a couple of weeks so he could prove that he's better at his job than him exactly. and the crux to that point everything comes in the physical embodiment of one character who i think i don't know if he's been around before but in this story vermin 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 yeah. is the crux that shows you why Peter Parker is Spider-Man and why Craven leads to the fate that Craven has. So Absolutely. After after he's in the grave, Peter's in. The, he gets shot. Then we get that famous, th- th- you know, the thing of him taking off the mask and laughing. Then Peter's in the grave. We don't see anything from Peter. Now the whole story is told from Mary Jane and Craven's perspective. And from Vermin this point on. And Vermin. Yeah. Yeah. So Vermin is a dude. Who lives in the sewers? You know mm. anything about Vermin? He, I don't know a ton about him. He was experimented on by Baron Zemo. I think Helmet Zemo. Zemo. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was trying to figure out who was. Yeah. Was was a Spider Woman a Zemo thing or was that a Hydra thing? I think that was a Hydra thing. Yeah. But yeah. So Z, he was created by J.M. Demidis and Mike Zack. So he, Vermin. Yeah. So that's why that's why uh, they were like, you know what? Let's bring Vermin back. Like this, it's got a cool congruency. He here. works. It's and, and, yeah. anyone else is, takes way too much. He's just. Unknown and known. You yeah, know, you it know. works way, and it's because of this kind of what you just said, the combination of human and animal. Like, if yeah. Molten Man was there, it would not have worked. He's sort of the Solomon Grundy of the story. He's, he is, he, that's a great compare. He is Solomon that's Grundy That's where he is story, at, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, so basically the attention shifts from Peter and Craven to Craven, Mary Jane, and Vermin, because the full title of this book is Fearful Symmetry, Craven's Last Yes, book. yes, yes. That is an incredible distinction. Mm-hmm. Break down what that means. What does fearful symmetry mean? So, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm certainly, I, I'm not an expert on this. <laughs> but <laughs> but if, if, if I had to assume, I think fearful symmetry is the parallels of how these four different characters deal with fear. Spider-Man, so, Vermin, Mary Jane, and Craven. Exactly. They're all dealing with fear in... In some way or another. That's what their whole arc is, the mm-hmm. whole story. They all fear something... Peter feel Peter fears losing Mary Jane the same way he lost Gwen, the same way he lost Ned, the same way he lost George Stacy and Uncle Ben. Craven fears not being able to best this enemy he's had his whole life. Vermin fears the surface, and he fears Spider Man and Captain America for beating him up. For be- beating and and uh, uh, J M uh, this the D- 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 yeah like sort of wrote a bunch of horror stories for DC and then transitioned to Marvel and mm-hmm. then. 
had that story where Captain America and Spider Man beat up right. Vermin. He wrote that. That's Vermin. And he's afraid of. He's afraid. Yeah, he's afraid of the surface. He's afraid of getting his ass kicked because of what Peter and Cap did. And that's an important mm-hmm. distinction too. Peter yeah. and Cap. and Captain America. Exactly. Craven is very obsessed with Vermin because it took Peter couldn't take him down on his own. Exactly. He needed Cap, and needed Craven's Cap. going. I could. Exactly. And uh, hold my and, beer. Yeah, hold. He had a hold my beer moment. Hold my uh, white Russian, <laughs> which over here we call Ukraine. Uh, <laughs> we call the Ukraven. <laughs> and and then last is Mary Jane. And Mary she Jane fears losing Peter. I love in the panels in that part of the story where she ju- you just keep seeing dead. Yeah, where she's just like he's dead. He's dead. 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 And then she's chasing the rat mm-hmm. and kills the rat and then cries after mm-hmm. killing the rat. Right. And, and very much in your face that this is a story about mortality. Absolutely. Right? Like yeah. there's no that's that everyone is facing the end. Mm-hmm. And also an opportunity to start again. Right. Literally every character is. It's a new beginning. The only one who is destined for this to be the end is Craven. Right. Because that's his new beginning is is ending ending on the way he wants like that. Exactly. Craven's whole thing here is that episode of Seinfeld where George realizes that he needs to leave conversations when he gets a laugh. <laughs> Thank you. It's and been Craven, great. It's been great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Spider Man. I'll be here all week with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and ho 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 ho! Mother Russia. They told me my mother was insane. She was Jerry. Uh, so, everyone else is running from their fear. Right. Craven has accepted it. Mm-hmm. He's su- truly the only one who has. Exactly. I think in this story. Exactly. Yeah. Exa- and that's why he's, when we get to it, he's the one who kind of comes out on top as the winner of the story in a very, very dark way. So, Mary Jane, basically, she's freaking out. She's like, where is Peter? He's gone missing. He hasn't been. She hasn't been home. He, they, he, and they've he, just been married. He, exactly. He hasn't been home for weeks. And like we and we know as the audience that he's been shot by Craven. She doesn't right. know what's going on. She has no idea. Yeah. Meanwhile, Vermin. He's eating people. He's scared of the surface world. And Craven. Vermin scenes are kind of like the second Predator movie. Yeah, like. a little bit. I always of, felt yeah. that way. Yeah, he's just eating peas. He's finding people. He goes, hey, that's a person on the surface. I'm going to bring them down to my world. I'm going to eat them. Hey, they look keto. Yeah. <laughs> Let me bring them down. I love I love just the he's so scared. He's so yeah, absolutely. Vulnerable. He's so vulnerable. He's man. so adorable. Like, he is so adorable. And like also I, I had to him. stop eating when I was reading his pages because they were so disgusting. Oh yeah. Like they're so fu- they're just gross. And is this the chapter where, where Mary Jane gets uh, those two dudes? Yeah, so these two dudes are just, like, just, she's lo- she's Cra- out looking Craven for- Craven needs, like, a bowl of, like, spider cum or some shit. Yeah, the Cra- Craven storyline on this, Craven loves herbs, he loves potions. Craven just That's loves kind of- being extra. He loves being extra. He loves it. He'd be a, he'd be a weird guy to trip with, like, he, 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 he takes so many, yeah, like... Yeah, man, you would have called Spider-Man if you took less drama classes and took exa- yourself more seriously. Exactly, man. It's like, just look at, there's, like, eating them, eating I feel like Pootie Tang, look at him! <laughs> Drinking milk out of the bowl. I feel like JB's move. Mary, Mary's out looking for Peter. These two creepy guys start following her. Right. They they get ready to mug her and who knows what else. And then all of a sudden, Spider Man appears and yeah. she's like, "Hell yeah, I'm good. I'm saved." I love that shot where yeah. she's afraid. I can't wait to see something like that in live action mm-hmm. one day, uh, where you know it's the end of the road and then right. just the look that she has. <laughs> That is the, the smile. Yeah, 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 just being like, "Oh, you guys are in more trouble than I am." Oh yeah. And then what happens? And so then she sees Spider Man beat the shit out of these guys, and she knows immediately it's not Peter. Immediately, mm-hmm. the love and the understanding of the character and the misery that he has to go through consistently, and that's what Craven's missing. Here. Right. He's never gonna have that because he can't. His need for victory blinds him for everything else. Exactly. He doesn't understand humanity because of how he grew up. Mm-hmm. Like what you're talking about. Like, you know, what his background is, where mm-hmm. you grew up and you had to escape. And like, you, right. know, you had to prove yourself to be the toughest one to yeah. get the biggest piece of the pie. Yeah. yeah you, me personally, growing up in Murray you, Hill, Manhattan. Yes, right, yeah, absolutely. You were out there every single day every with vermin day. chasing rats down. <laughs> Excuse me, so, uh, good uh, rat. Can you please come friend, back? <laughs> do I have a piece of cheese for you? <laughs> My name is Milhouse. Oh, oh God! In the, oh, oh God! God. Oh, God. Lee Lee with the Craven and the shooters in and the, the alley. Oh, and, oh my goodness! And the golly! And the, <laughs> it's raining for four straight days. And oh, the Craven! I have no umbrella. You know. 
so this whole this the the rest the throughout the whole story we see Craven trying to be Spider Man. He right. has his breaks between being Spider Man and being Craven. Right. And after the Mary Jane scene where she realizes, oh, oh, Peter is is actually gone. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, or just something happens. Yeah. This is this she is not know. him. Yeah. Yeah, he's she's just like what 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 I, that's the scarier part. Right. It's like when you lose a dog instead of a dog dying. Mm -hmm. You're like that dog is probably dead, mm -hmm. but I'd rather know what happened to him. Yeah, it, it's the, it it's could still be alive. It's the not knowing, and and it's it's interesting Craven's approach because James Demitis said what, the way Craven sees Spider Man is not how who is not who he is. He sees him almost like Batman is the dark in like the Dark Knight Returns, like this gruesome grizzly guy who yeah. beats the shit out of criminals, and that's not who Spider Man. That's is. how Craven sees. That's Spider -Man. how Craven sees him. So this is who. But why yeah. though? Because he's the one getting his ass beat all the time right. by Spider Man. That's true, and Craven thinks it's because that Spider-Man is stronger right. than he is, which is true physically, yeah. um, emotionally, probably. Yeah. But, like, I don't think any hero is perfect. No. Most of the time you want to see the heroes be heroes. Mm -hmm. I like when they're heroes. Oh, yeah. But also, like, I, I, you, you, I would get sick of just only seeing the bad guy beat up the good guy. The human element keeps the story moving. I think what the dichotomy at this point in the story that they're trying to show and why Vermin works so well is it's like having two different therapists, right? right? And Vermin is the client. Right? Or like I'm just saying as a New Yorker, I can I can relate to having five therapists. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Three of them are And cousins. an endocrinologist. <laughs> yeah. No, this is almost like therapy right now. This it whole is. thing has been a test just to, just being like, Okay, so tell me where you've never touched a woman. <laughs> Um, the, the, is, is, uh, I, I don't want to step on your toes. Also, just feel free to summarize whenever you want oh, to no, summarize Oh, no, 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 cool. Because now I'm at a point where I'm like, yeah, we talked about this whole book. Boy. Absolutely. Um, where did you last leave off? I don't uh, know. So I we left off. off. I'm yeah, sorry. no, 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 please cut me. It's, uh, I, I love, no, I love the insight. Uh, it's, we, we left off where Mary Jane realizes Cra Spidey is, is Craven. Yes. Well, not, not that he's Craven. It's not. Well, it's not Peter. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. like, it's not Spider-Man. And, uh, and then the next chapter is when you see Craven going out doing Spider-Man oh, stuff. Oh, baby. He's doing it with no, he's crawling walls, man. He's scaling those walls. He is. With no powers. No powers. Well, power. And no power. No power. No, po you, no like, power oh, for you. It's, it's crazy it's how you're doing it. Walking. Thank you. Well, I watch him, Craven, climb these walls. Some <laughs> crazy, crazy handsome. Take me, daddy. Wow. Christopher Walken, as Spider-Man, puts on the symbiote <laughs> for the first time. What's he feel? This costume. I love the power it gives me. And it... Immediately, my face is available to eat food. This food that I didn't have before <laughs> because I had a fabric cloth mask on, but now it comes off and I can eat my knish. Here's a Christopher Walken in the church asking God to kill Spider-Man. Please, God, I don't ask for a lot, but <laughs> this guy stole my job as a photographer. I know I told you after Natalie Wood. <laughs> after Natalie Wood. I wouldn't Wood, ask you for anything. I would ask you for anything because I got away with murder, but I'll be damned if I let this Peter do what he's doing out there. Please give me power. Ow, it's loud in this church <laughs> with the volume. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love he does his own onomatopoeia. <laughs> <laughs> ow! 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 Wow! wow. I, you know, I, see, I know it hurts. <laughs> if I was a rich man, wow, well, uh, digga, digga, yigga, oh. digga, digga, wow. I have money to buy noise canceling headphones. <laughs> I can't, th that's perfect. I want this whole. We're going to do an alternate take of the dramatic reading of this story, and Peter is just. Please, yeah, I know. Walking the whole time. <laughs> I'm stuck in this dud. It's dirty. The dud on my skin. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're in chapter three. Okay, all right. Craven so, versus uh, Vermin. It's uh, it. Uh, yeah, Craven. He takes him in. Mm -hmm. He takes him in, yeah. and then he puts him in a cage. And exactly. You go, why? Why is he? Why is he? Why is he in this cage? Mm -hmm. what's, what? What's he? We, you, you're at this point where you're going. If you're reading this for the first time, you're thinking, A, who is Vermin? Mm -hmm. B, they did such a good job at explaining to you why he's afraid of Spider-Man right. that, like, you understand why that threat is there. But 
out of all of the villains, mm. why is Craven going after Vermin? Yeah. And which I mean, it's because of it's because the Captain America and, exactly. and Peter Parker thing. Spider Man like, couldn't beat him on his own. There's the and and that is that's where I saw what Craven's last hunt was. Right. And it was a hunt against him. Again against Vermin. No, against himself. Oh, against himself, exactly. Yeah. He 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 beat Spider Man by shooting him, but he ha- he needs to prove that he is better than him. I always looked at him shooting Spider Man and putting him in the grave as a way of him being like I'm pausing you for a second. Yeah, like, you are going to get in the fucking way of me doing this. There's no way you're going to be cool with me just wearing your skin. And he, and he kills people as Spider-Man. Does he? Yeah. He's there's killing motherfuckers? There was, like, he, he's, like, beating the shit out of people, and there's, like, these two detectives, like, I don't know. I, I call all detectives Sam and Twitch, like, from Spawn, because I, I never learned the their same names. Guy. Yeah, I never yeah. know him either. We'll I, just know, say, I don't even know the animated series cops other than Gordon, but there's that really fat one. Oh, uh, Bullock. That's his name? That makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Harvey Bullock. But yeah, yeah. So we'll say Sam and Twitch are talking, and they're just like, and Twitch is like, man, fuck, fuck this Spider-Man. He's going crazy. And Sam's like, what's it matter? He's putting villains away. So what if, he, if he's intense? And well, then Twitch is like, no, he put this guy in the ground. Craven is like, okay, the final thing I need to do is I need to beat Vermin on my own. That's something Spider-Man wasn't able to do. So he beats the shit out of Vermin. He yes. puts him in a cage. Right. And he can finally say, hey, I fucking did it. Yes. I did what Spidey couldn't do. I beat up Vermin, cut to Peter Parker, rises from the grave. Final shot of chapter three. And it was like a swarm of spiders or something that go toward the grave, which was kind of the only weird thing I had about this book. Yeah. It's weird. It kind of felt like... like a hat on a hat. Yeah. I mean, I guess this story gets so many comparisons to Dark Knight Returns Mm -hmm. that... Or uh, 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 no. Uh, I mean, I guess Dark Knight Returns. You can compare it to. You can compare it to Dark Batman stories like Long Halloween or whatever. But like, it kind of just reading it. All I heard was the Thriller music <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> it was just like, do 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 do. And then he comes up. The thriller, thriller, my fucking craving, <laughs> craving's out. Peter Parker is dead, and now he's finding Mary Jane. I'm looking for craving. It was an odd choice from Mike Zack to do the thriller dance well, in the you middle. Know, <laughs> the whole reason we got the Tobey Maguire movies was because of Michael Jackson. Oh, really? That was a huge part of it. Michael Jackson owned half of Sony. Oh, wow. He, in the 80s, quick side bit, quick mm-hmm. tidbit, uh, Paul McCartney was a mentor of Michael's, and Paul oh, yeah, McCartney, they wrote all the Beatles songs. He bought, yeah. bought, after John Lennon died, right. Michael bought the Beatles rights to him, right. and then... He, John, Michael had a lawyer who was a brilliant dude named John Branca, and John Branca helped him do all these these incredible business deals. And Sony Records, obviously, mm-hmm. was, I think Michael went from Epic to he was with Sony Records at some point. Right. And uh, I'm not going to fact check that. Basically, <laughs> I mean, at some point he was. I forget where. I mean, I'm talking like later into the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, totally. Um, and uh, that's around the time Marvel went bankrupt. Mm-hmm. And there's a video on YouTube you could find it of like Stan Lee showing Michael Jackson around. The Marvel Vault in mm-hmm. New York City, because Michael was was lobbying. That was when Marvel sold. They put up all their characters right. for sale, and Sony only bought Spider Man because they said nobody gives a shit about the others. And Fox and bought like, Fantastic and, Four yeah, yeah, and Daredevil, yeah, yeah. right? That Fox bought Fantastic Four. They bought X Men. Mm-hmm. Were those the two? And Daredevil. Daredevil, yeah. right? We only got one of those. Oh, that was great. <laughs> I I'm I'm for I like the first Fantastic Four movie, man. The first Fantastic Four movie is is fun for what it is. I think just us being uh, 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 kids who grew up in the 2000s, late 90s, for what it is, you go back and watch it, and I see like a fucking Pepsi billboard. Oh yeah, with the 2000s Pepsi. Michael like, Chiklis. Michael Chiklis as the thing. Yeah. Perfect casting. They should have just given him a yarmulke. God, I no they 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 it, in the in the director's cut he's now wearing trunks and he's circumcised that's how they did it he goes hey matchstick look at this I call it stretcho oh boy um in the story now mm-hmm. where are we in the story now we are in the story uh vermin's in a cage Peter's rising from the grave oh yeah it was, it was, it was, it was overkill with the spiders so Michael thriller, yeah. Michael Jackson yeah. bought. When all those characters went up for sale, he played a big part in Sony buying the Spider-Man rights because he wanted to play Uncle Ben. Really? And then uh, he also wanted to play Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> uh, and Jar Jar didn't happen, and so he latched on the Spider-Man, and he had some kind of 
thing in his contract where Sony had to put him in one movie, so that's how he ended up in Men in Black 3. Oh, wow. Say all that to say that. <laughs> that Michael Jackson was almost Uncle... He was almost Tobey Maguire's Uncle Ben. Really? Yeah. Great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Peter, something is changing inside of you. When you look in the mirror, I don't know if you see the person that's looking back at you, Peter. <laughs> It's ignorant your cameras. You're ignorant. I don't know what's happening. Aunt May's coming downstairs right now. It's Lisa Marie Presley. Oh my god. That's Aunt May. <laughs> She's gonna tell you some things about Scientology you need to hear, Peter. Lisa Marie's dead, actually. I probably shouldn't uh, say yeah, that. She died last year. That's a good way to turn the first Spider Man movie into a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, it's just Michael Jackson's Uncle Ben. And, exactly. comes, and like Peter's trying not they should do like Mike, but with Michael Jackson. <laughs> Like he's like, make me like Mike, and he goes on the court, and like he's playing against the Bulls, and he's just moonwalking, and like this kid has schizophrenia, and Pippin's uh, still going crazy, and so this guy's still freaking, all over the place. He's moonwalking, he's, like, he's holding blanket out the window. Long story short, now we're at the point. I don't tell me if I'm skipping over anything important. Peter's out and he's mm-hmm. pissed. He's pissed. He goes and he finds crazy. He has a hallucination of Ned. Ned. Yeah. He has that hallucination of Ned. Right. Yeah. So he see he sees Ned leads and he's basically and Ned's talking to him. He goes, "Oh shit, there's Ned." And then all of a sudden Ned's face starts melting off and then he and he's like, "Oh fuck, Ned's dead. Am I dead?" And he's just having all this whole existential crises and eventually he does rise from the grave. And he, which he, he starts saying to himself, "This is after the spider thing." Exactly. So like after that, the, after that the spider, spider thing, thing is like to keep you interested right. by the next issue. Exactly. He's saying, yeah. "I'm the spider." Yeah. He goes, right. "No, I'm right. Peter right. Parker. Right. Yeah. It is my yes. strength. It, it is my weakness. It is my strength." That is where he learns that lesson. Exactly. Peter makes me strong, mm-hmm. even though I don't feel strong. Peter is me. Peter is me. That is the contrast to Batman. Mm-hmm. Batman needs to put on a mask. Oh, Peter yeah. doesn't want to wear the mask. He does it. He does this begrudgingly. Hates it. Hates it. Every part of it. Yeah. But who else is going to do it? Yeah. That was that great line in Spider Verse with Gwen had with her dad, where she was like, "I don't want to do it, but I know if I don't do it, someone else is going to put it on, and they'll be worse off, right? Because of it." I got goosebumps. That scene that they how they did that in Spider Verse, oh, man. My God. And like the thing is, this, you know, I'm not trying to sound social justicey, but there's a lot of people who are drawing parallels and this is way off topic but they're drawing parallels between Gwen and her whole arc in that movie they're saying you know Gwen is trans right, and this right. is a trans allegory I don't I don't give a shit either mm-hmm. way the way I look at that I didn't see that but I see it yeah I didn't see it at first but after I read about it I saw it totally then then I realized that's how you know the whole point of Spider-Man and this is a beaten to death talking point but anyone can wear the mask exactly the whole purpose of these heroes, when the mask covers their whole face, is you see yourself in that. Mm-hmm. Who am I to tell somebody that they're wrong about Gwen being a trans person? Who mm-hmm. am I to tell somebody that uh, uh, Peter Parker is the only Spider-Man? Who right. am I to tell somebody Miles Morales is the only Spider-Man? Spider-Man is so unique in it of itself because it's almost a reverse origin story where someone even though he gets bitten by a spider and then becomes strong he also i feel like doesn't get his strength from that he gets his strength from what happens to him when he is knocked down Mm -hmm. right like and he has to and you have that first that's that's it's it's, it's like that stallone line he could so about how you hit it's right. about how you can get hit yeah. and keep going you forward. You get back enough. up. You get back up. That's not life. That's not you. Yeah, that's it. That's what cowards do. Yeah. Hey, that ain't you. I'm not going to call Michael B. Jordan the yeah. donkey, but I'm upset I wasn't with, in Creed 3. With great power comes great, great responsibility. Responsibility. You want me to negotiate? I ain't no man. Hey, yeah, I got it on the first try. Yeah, I got to be spendable. <laughs> that's product plays back. That's like product. I'm proud of every time I take spendable. <laughs> Hey, Bruce Willis can't say it anymore. Hey, yeah, we can't. We can do that it. That is Spider Man. Exactly. Man. Like, he is Spider Man is that panel <laughs> yeah. that they did in Homecoming. Mm-hmm. Come on, Spider Man. Come on, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. That's all of us have that inside of us. Right? Oh, you mean when the rubble's on top when of him? Like right out, him, right out of the Master Planner storyline from the comic Sp- books. Yeah. yeah. It's come on, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. And this coming out of what he just went through, Peter, does, Peter goes through shit. He doesn't have right. tests like he has coming out of the grave. 
You see him coming out of the grave, and he knows exactly who he's going to fuck up. The oh, only yeah. time you ever see him like this was during Civil War after Aunt May got shot. Oh, 30 years Oh, later. my God, with him and Fisk? Yeah, That's... where he goes to, in front of everybody in prison, mm-hmm. and he grabs the symbiote mm-hmm. out of the thing and goes, I knew I kept this motherfucker here for a reason. Exactly. So I'll have to say, Peter comes out, finds Craven. They get into a fight. Craven and Peter fight. Craven's like not even fighting back. Yeah, not really. He's no, he, because he's like, I've already beaten he's you. He's like, I did what I had to do. This is the trap spider. Yeah, exactly. and, there's, and then what happens? What's well, the, going on? There's a great line before he confronts Craven. He goes, right. he goes, I want to fucking kill him. He goes, a part of me wants to kill him. He goes, but just a small part. Because that's that's who Peter is. And Craven's like, I'm not going to fight back. I've already beaten you. Because not only did I beat you, I also did the one thing you couldn't. I beat Vermin on my own. And shows him Vermin. Exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and he goes in. So then he's like, he goes, I beat Vermin on my own, which you couldn't do. You needed Cap. He goes, I beat you. He goes, I'm done. He goes, you can tell because your spider sense isn't going off that I'm not a threat anymore. And Peter's like, oh, fuck, he's right. And then he lets Vermin go. And, and Spidey's like, what are you doing? And Vermin also doesn't know what the fuck to do. He doesn't know what to he do. He doesn't know which Spider-Man beat him up. Exactly. He knows a Spider-Man beat mm-hmm. him up. Uh, that's what he's upset about in the early in the book. He's right. like, Spider-Man beat me up. I have to go up there. I got to find him. And then yeah. he goes up and he peeps his head out. He's like, no, I'm scared. And he goes <laughs> down. And then Craven comes down in the sewers, finds him. Right. And then he just, he Vermin wanders off like a, like a wounded dog. He and does. I look at Vermin in this story as sort of the one thing Craven and Peter have in common here. Mm-hmm. Where they are both vermin. I mm-hmm. feel like he is the physical embodiment of the thing that they are both feeling right. weakest about. Where Vermin's scared of the world outside, and he's he has to fight back against it because that's the only way he has a place in that world, and he has to hide, mm-hmm. and he has to live uh, away from other people because if he lives close with them, he hurts them. That's the Peter ethos, right? Uh, and and the Craven ethos is uh, that that Vermin is dealing with throughout this whole book is I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm tough. Exactly. It's like abusive dads, you're, right? We're like I'm tough, I'm absolutely. strong, but on the inside, I'm very scared and insecure, and I don't know what to do. And the only reason I am this scary is so right. you don't get that close to me. And I don't. It's the he's he's almost Vermin is kind of the cowardly lion. <laughs> Talk me out of it. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Courage. <laughs> just, Raven. I just need a little courage. I need a little courage. With great power comes oh, great responsibility. Is that a from that tree? <laughs> I didn't know what they did to Judy Garland. I would have stood up to it. I would have stopped it. Stop. He's, a, he's a tin man. Stop. How is that physically he's, possible? He's a... <laughs> they would have needed a stepladder. <laughs> and so I have indigestion. When I have indigestion. And also I think I have what they call bipolar disorder. <laughs> There's voices in my head. <laughs> I didn't mean to kill that little girl. I thought we was painting. They're telling me to assassinate <laughs> Reagan. <laughs> I did it for Jody. <laughs> Jody Foster. I read it in Catcher in the You've Rye. You've never seen Mean Streets? <laughs> <laughs> Taxi driver. So then the last show off mm-hmm. is the fight. Between Craven and and Spidey, and right. they go and 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 Craven goes. I'm not here to fight you. You should probably go chase after him. Exactly. I'm not looking after you. Yeah. And Peter goes, okay, you give me your word that you're done. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave. Mm-hmm. But if you if I for one second Craven find out you're hunting, I'm gonna beat that ass. Mm-hmm. Then he oh, goes, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna beat that ass. I'm gonna get in that ass. I'm gonna fucking ride you I'm like Secretariat. I am on you like symbiote on the Spidey. <laughs> I'm fucking gonna ride you, and then he goes out to do this shit with Craven. Craven's and last fuck. Craven's last fuck w- was to himself, and that's <laughs> where I think the most powerful moment of the story comes oh, yeah. after he, after Spider Man leaves. Yeah, after what he happens? rails him. After everything, after he rails him, after they fuck, and he goes, "Oh, I don't want to be hunted anymore. I'm not craving that, if you know what I mean." <laughs> but yes, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry for the. It is attention. not my spider sense tingling. It is my prolapsed anus. <laughs> it's. <laughs> there is something shooting out of my asshole, and it is not Webb. It is what Reagan administration, who is current president, calls the fault of the gay agenda. Is that your web shooter? You're just happy to see it me. It hurts. No, I'm not happy. I want to die like Mother Russia. But yes. So what? So so Spider-Man leaves, mm-hmm. and this oh boy, and this Craven part. and 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 Spider-Man is skeptical leave him, but. Mm-hmm. Takes him at his word. Right. Sometimes heroes do that. Sometimes mm-hmm. they take the villains at their word. 
which I always think shows the dichotomy. Absolutely. Between the hero and the villain. Because Spider-Man trusts him. Mm -hmm. Craven's not the guy that's going to go back on his word. No. That's why they included that panel where he was so surprised that he used a rifle because mm -hmm. Spider Man understands him so well. And his web sense, his spidey sense isn't going, off, going off. Yeah. His spidey senses weren't going off. That's always the scariest thing ever, man. Mm -hmm. And then what happens after Spider Man leaves to go chase down Vermin? Here's Craven. And he goes, he goes into his home and he's he in starts, his mansion. He's got the inner monologue going. He goes, he goes, a life fulfilled. He goes, he was a man. He goes, that's what I never saw in this guy. I always saw him as a spider, but he was a man. He goes, but I beat him. I'm better than him. He goes, and then he says, and they said my mother was insane. But before we talk about what happens after that, I want to point out the lightning cracks that mm -hmm. they talk, that they onomatopoeia throughout oh, yeah. the panel. Oh, like, yeah. Like there's a lot of yeah. like, lightning strikes and gunshots are the same uh -huh. in this book. In the beginning of the book, there's a lot of... Uh -huh. And then at the end, he goes, my mother was insane. And you see the crack thing. Mm -hmm. And then what do you see? He takes out the rifle. He has the rifle in the casket. Is it in the casket? I think so. Or I think it's in the casket. Yeah. It might be Bernstein Bear Mandela. And thing. he has a note. He's written a note where he's confessed to everything he's done, to beating up Spider-Man, to killing while wearing his costume. And he takes the gun out. And as we said at the beginning of the podcast, Craven's mother killed him, killed herself after being committed. He says, they said my mother was insane. He pulls out the gun and he shoots himself dead. That last hunt was Craven hunting down the only thing he was never able to accomplish. Like as, like, as with all Spider-Man villains. Right. Norman Osborn was always pissed that his experiments were called Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. uh, Venom is in love with... Peter, mm -hmm. and it's like a toxic ex situation. Craven is the only one that goes out on his own terms and didn't need to kill or do anything to Spider Man other than just to. He was like, This is it. Right. I'm good. That last shot. And what's amazing is this story was not written for Spider Man and Craven initially. It was written when J.M. Demidus originally wrote the story. He wrote it for Wonder Man. Uh, the, the, Wonder the, Man and his yeah. half brother, the Grim Reaper. Exactly. And Marvel rejected it. So then he brought it to DC. And he's like, why don't we do this with Batman and the and Joker? And the Joker. Yeah. And, and, he's, and it was and, too similar to the Killing Joke. And it was a story Joke. about where, uh, which was was that Alan Moore, the Killing Joke? The Killing Joke was Alan Moore, yeah. That's so crazy. And it was the same. They, and, and Killing Joke hadn't come out yet, but they knew they were moving forward. But the story it. that I guess Jam Demidus was going for was B Joker finally killed Batman and becomes sane. Right. And I'm glad that never Harley happened Clinton. because the story that they did, Batman White Knight, which mm -hmm. is one we got we to do oh, yeah, one yeah. of these days, where Joker... Batman just has enough of his shit, and he just puts a bunch of antidepressants down the Joker's uh, throat, and mm -hmm. he's like, "You want to prove to me you can be sane? Prove it!" And mm -hmm. then Joker goes sane, and then like becomes like a city councilman, mm -hmm. and then that's that's like Harley like, Quinn. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and then it's revealed that like Harley was the one that was giving him the drugs the whole time to oh, save him, wow. and then weaned him off the drugs because oh, he didn't wow. like it. What here's here's one why, why I love Craven's last time. It happens, mm -hmm. and then Spider Man's life picks up. Mm -hmm. Now he's got to go chase down Craven. He's got to replace his. Uh, he's got to fix his relationship with Mary Jane. He's got to do all this. He's got to. He's got to just go back to being Peter Parker. Peter Parker shit. Mm -hmm. You know, you have arcs, you have ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. This is a finality mm -hmm. of a character who everybody was introduced to in his last chapter. Right. And now he's a superstar in PS4 or PS5 Insomniac Spider Man. He's got the he's got the movie coming out. We'll see how that's gonna how that's gonna go. I don't yeah. want them to adapt the story because this is way too soon to adapt a story like you this can't for do both it without Spider Man, Spider -Man. Or Craven. Yeah. You can't. And also it's like uh it's it's like the problem with Zack Snyder's Justice League where like yeah, they all just went up against Dark Side. Who mm -hmm. the fuck are they gonna go up against after that? Where is an actual threat? Where right. are the stakes, you know? Um this is a story told it's like what they tried to do with Venom. Mm -hmm. Right, the movie, which I love, the Venom. Oh movie. yeah, Tom Hardy's great. Second one, I even like the better. Fast and Furious realize, movies for what yeah, they are, for what it is. It's a story told from the villain's perspective, right? Uh, and and Spider Man is a secondary character in his own story here, mm -hmm. and um, it also enhances the lore of Spider Man because of what this villain goes through, right? And uh. That is the, I mean, Spider Man and Batman have the best rogues gallery. Oh, yeah. But I realized a couple of weeks ago that most of Batman's villains don't have powers. Oh, no. I never really realized that before. Uh, 
most of Spider-Man's villains do. They got some enhancements. They have some right. shit happening. Except Craven. Mm-hmm. Craven is just that. He is just a dude. Mm-hmm. Just like Peter Parker is he took just some acid a dude. And like, he, he like took some ayahuasca. He took in the ayahuasca. Jungle, and apparently, and can run as fast as a cheetah. Yeah, we like, all can yeah. on ayahuasca. Actually. I did cocaine <laughs> for three years, and I thought I was Usain Bolt. Um, you were Usain Bolt. I was. Yeah, yeah they, I was Bolt. I've never seen the two of you not in, no, in the room at the we're same not time. In the same, no, no, dog. I'm telling you, I didn't want to. I told you not to bring that up in air, but I did anyway. <laughs> this, this was wonderful. It was just it was, such a, it's a pleasure to do one. this with you. My spider friend. <laughs> it's crazy how cool this comic is. 